Hey, and welcome to this special walkthrough video. We are in October, it's beautiful weather. We're at the beautiful coast of Croatia, now in the city of Split, in the harbor. There's been so much development. And in this video, I want to show you the Blue Game 42. It's a very special boat. It has so much more to offer than on the first glimpse. And also I want to show you some locations that we visited during the last couple of days. So come on board with me. So let's start the tour at the back of this yacht. Here we have a large sun pad that allows you to sunbase, obviously. Below this is also the engine room hatch that we can open with these buttons over here. So basically uh, pressing these buttons uh, makes the engine room hatch go up. So the engine room hatch is open and uh, you have uh, good access via this ladder that you can fold down. And then if you, the camera comes a bit close, if you move here, you see down there the generator where it's saying Kohler and where the paper roll is, is the Sea Keeper. It's the gyro stabilization system that uh, also uh, the owner made an upgrade with some lithium batteries that basically um, for around 15 hours uh, you can run um, even the stabilizer on the battery so you don't need to switch on the generator in the bay. And there will also be an upgrade to be able to run the water maker and the ice maker via the lithium batteries. So uh, one night in the bay, you can be completely uh, independent and don't need to switch on the generator, which is such a nice feeling when you don't have the noise, don't have the fumes coming out on the side of the boat that you can swim around it and, and just enjoy the sound of the nature of the waves. And uh, yeah, that's something I really like and it's very smart from, from these owners. Then you have the uh, engines, the Volvo Penta D6 IPS 650, which is basically the upgrade uh, version. There is a smaller version um, and they're really punchy, so you can kick the uh, throttle down and it goes up to a top speed of uh, around 37 knots, uh, consuming uh, five liters per mile. And then if you, you have quite a steady curve uh, of the fuel consumption, you have a cruising speed of 27 knots and then you consume around four and a half liters per mile. It's pretty economic and um, even on lower speeds, you don't really uh, uh, consume much less. And of course, if you go in idle speed, then uh, you have uh, um, like 1.5 liters per mile or something. Um, what else? I mean, there's a bilge, there's battery, um, there's uh, everything nicely accessible. Um, and the engines are uh, proven Volvo Penta. As I said, it's the IPS, which will uh, uh, we show you the joystick uh, further in, in the cockpit. So uh, then you also have an engine room camera. And all in all, the boat is super well equipped. It has uh, like a really high spec. I think there's uh, the highest spec uh, uh, Blue Game 42 on the market now. So let me close the engine room hatch and then we continue back here. Yeah, and then those are the switches for the engine room hatch, as we just saw. The uh, hydraulic bathing platform you switch on by pressing those buttons at the same time. And then over there you can see as the uh, platform uh, goes down a bit, so I, I don't uh, fully go down. So you see that the whole platform moves down into the water and then you can easily launch the tender. And then basically the platform comes back up and that's it. So it's super easy to launch the tender. You have to uh, make sure that uh, the tender is nicely uh, uh, moved away. So uh, the uh, bathroom platform is free and then you can launch it easily into the water. They opted for a uh, electric uh, torpedo engine, which I have to say it's really convenient because also in the engine room you have an electric plug. So if you're in the port, you can charge your um, torpedo motor with, uh, well, electricity and then um, it gives you uh, a great uh, ease of use and it's also silent and uh, I was really surprised how well uh, it actually works. Now back here you have um, obviously your mooring system where basically you have the cleats, uh, the winches, then you have a shower and um, with hot and cold water you have a, uh, a hose uh, connection and here you have the, the foot uh, rest for the winch and here you fill up your fresh water. And then basically over here you have the bathing ladder um, and at the same time the pass rail that you activate and then it comes out on the back and then it moves up and down and also down into the water. So you can actually use it as a bathing ladder, but also um, like in the port, it, it can actually go quite high up and then 
you just press one button and it self-aligns and goes back in. And it's a system from Opak Mare. I uh, was a bit skeptical, but I have to say it's really nice. Although what I'm missing a bit is like a reeling, but I'm sure you can actually uh, have something to attach. And maybe you've noticed, but the little torpedo propeller was broken because my little son was uh, driving around. Uh, he was the captain um, of this boat. And then uh, that's the way how to learn that you actually pull up the uh, outboard engine when you go into the port. So on a boat, you always have a lesson every day and you learn something. Here you have the uh, shore power connection, so you open this little hatch and then you connect it uh, to nicely go out here and then you can uh, pull it through and we have some little uh, uh, flexible cable binders that we actually attach it to the rope, so that's pretty convenient. And this boat is all about uh, convenience and uh, pragmatic uh, ease of use because all the corners are rounded, you have a lot of space to walk around. You can even store this uh, stand-up paddle here on the side, you have this uh, big reelings and now let's continue a bit on the side. So behind the stand up paddle on both sides, you actually have these uh, holders where you can put your boat hook and you can put the poles uh, for the front deck, the carbon poles to make like a sun awning, which is also pretty nice. You see everything is super solid. Also these uh, sun poles can go back here. So you can also have a sun awning uh, over there um, and also in the front. And then this ladder actually leads you up to the flybridge deck, you see that uh, you're on the top and it's super spacious. Now I'll show you the uh, midsection lounge where basically you pass by here. You have also on both sides uh, a fuel uh, inlet where you can uh, fill up. And then here you have this open lounge, which I find super well designed because basically if you put these uh, uh, flexible window covers away, you have a completely open boat, which uh, uh, gives you all the fresh air that you want. But also if it's a bit uh, too hot, you can close it and put on the air conditioning so you can actually have some uh, cool air in here. Or if it's too warm, too, too cold outside, you can also close it and heat via the air conditioning. So I really um, uh, think that's a very great concept, how you can use a space, how you can set up a space for a double function. Because this you basically just roll down and then you have a huge window, but you're also protected when you go for a long cruise, for example, from the cold winds in the evening, you can uh, take on your jumpers and then basically sit here and, uh, and warm up. And this uh, table is uh, uh, also on a rise and uh, fall mechanism and um, the buttons uh, are over there, yes. So you can basically just lower and then you could also have a big cushion uh, to put inside. So you have an additional bed or sun lounge or however you want to use it. I mean, you could also sleep here during the night uh, and enjoy the starry sky. So I really like how this is uh, set up flexible. And then this uh, is a pop-up uh, um, faucet where you can turn on, uh, where you have your hot and cold water. You have some storage below here for the little bin. And then you have some cold uh, storage, uh, two uh, uh, fridges for your cold drinks. Then uh, you pop this up and then you have a uh, cooking uh, top where you can also do some teppanyaki style um, or cook outside. You also have the uh, um, uh, cooking plate inside and the microwave, which we will show you later. Then uh, over here you have a very practical uh, uh, storage space where there's actually uh, lots of uh, room uh, to put uh, your diving gear or uh, some plates and uh, water bottles uh, and to surf uh, outside. And uh, also these windows, you can just uh, zip them open and then roll them up like those side doors. So let's continue forward and um, I'll show you the cockpit. So arriving in the, in the cockpit, basically we have this beautiful carbon fiber uh, uh, bench, which is really comfortable with some adjustable backrests. And um, over here, we also have another storage in, in the roof. And then also uh, here in the uh, um, cockpit, everything is set up in a very uh, practical way. So while you're cruising, you can just roll down these doors or one either side, depending on where the wind is coming from. And you always feel protected. But also when you go in the port, it's pretty easy. You just zip them open, roll them up, and then you're immediately inside, outside. You can see the sides uh, for the mooring maneuvers and also um, uh, it's, everything is super accessible. Then you can sit down, lower this uh, little footrest here, so it's quite a comfortable cruising position. And also what I like a lot is this uh, kind of uh, aircraft style or explorer style uh, displays that are arranged uh, smartly over here. So uh, 
you can actually adjust it and now the backlight is just adjusted down from uh, the night cruising. So then you go to the power button and give it uh, a full uh, um, uh, luminosity. And the, those Garmin displays are fully integrated with the Volvo Penta steering system. So uh, you put on the ignition switch, you have this keyless ignition with the Volvo Penta, which is super comfortable. So you kind of activate it one time and then you just press, uh, you put on obviously the battery switches in the switchboard below, put on the ignition and it can start and stop the engines. Here also those buttons are nicely arranged. You have your navigation lights, your underwater lights and um, the wipers, you even have uh, um, the anchor um, here, you have a searchlight, which is super powerful. You're actually going to annoy a lot of people using a searchlight. We tried it uh, when we were docking one time in Korchla um, when it was already dark, but it's super powerful, easy to use. And then obviously you have your uh, engine uh, control and then the joystick. And one thing that I'm going to demonstrate you also uh, 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 in a minute is the uh, DPS, the dynamic positioning system, where basically you press the button and the boat keeps its position. It's very useful when you go uh, next to the um, uh, uh, fuel station, for example, or you want to dock like sideways, you can two meters uh, press the side of the, of, the, of the wall, press the button, the boat stays stable with uh, a little room for, for some maneuvering. And then you can adjust the lines, the fenders, you, you can really prepare and that makes it so much easier to, to uh, basically uh, handle the boat uh, even alone. You really can handle it uh, super comfortable like this. And of course, there's a lot of experienced pilots and uh, captains uh, um, uh, that will say, oh, you know, I want to have the traditional way, but it's super, easy to use super uh, uh, for, for some first time boaters. So you can already start with this 42 um, boat because it's so easy to, to, uh, to manage and handle. What else? We have a thruster, which is a proportional one. So basically it means uh, the more power you give, uh, uh, the more it, it, uh, it, it runs. So the more you spin and if you, you can also just go very slowly and um, that's activated by those two buttons here. And um, I talked already about the uh, the displays. Then you also have the FLIR night vision camera, which is also a huge extra, huge option. You have a very uh, you have a, a digital radar, and um, then you also have the gyro. This is the display where to activate the gyro over here, and uh, the steering wheel is also pretty uh, um, like high quality feeling. It has this rubber kind of grips behind, and the rest is like solid metal, and you really feel like a proper steering wheel that also uh, gives you nice feedback. Then here we have the uh, Garmin uh, radio that also works like a charm. And um, yeah, all in all, it's a, it's a very comfortable cruising position because you're high up. So the whole kind of um, um, setup here is that the cockpit is, is over the cabin basically, which you will see in a minute. And this gives you a super nice overview. You see the front, you see the bow, you see the off deck. You can just sit down and then you see the horizon also and you see it every time you see all the angles of the boat and that gives you a really good feeling for the boats and and you can navigate super precisely and and so easy so it's really a absolute uh, um, user-friendly boat then we have some air conditioning outlets and here we have a hatch with the fusion uh, radio also inside then you have some uh, um, like vide posh where you can put all your belongings and the keys and uh, just put everything there once you step on board and then this door actually leads down to the cabin, which we'll show. And now we just go to the front deck where you have this uh, huge uh, sun pad. You have some windows uh, for the natural light, some carbon uh, fiber drink holders, which is a nice touch. And then over here, those uh, things are for the uh, carbon fiber poles to have the sun awning. And then um, you see how spacious it is, how easy it's to walk around. Everything is rounded and nicely accessible. Down here, we actually have a hatch, which is super practical because you can store a lot of things. It's pretty deep. So you have all your cables, all your cleaning, everything can go down here. And um, you have a separate uh, anchor uh, uh, compartment, which is down here. So basically you open this and then you have the anchor uh, um, a chain uh, going down here. And also one thing is uh, a nice design feature is you can easily open this uh, up in the front and then you have all your mooring gear here. You have also a, a, an anchor wash, uh, you have the anchor chain uh, control station 
and um, you have your mooring winch uh, also controlled separately. So yeah, all in all, it's, uh, it's really easy to handle, especially also since you have this rubber um, going around the whole boat. Of course, we put some fenders, um, but also, you know, for a quick kind of uh, touch and go, you could even do it without fenders, which, well, I, I, I always like to have fenders, but you, you could. And um, yeah, I mean, all in all, the boat is also super well maintained. Uh, you can really see the Swiss owner's mentality. They're also into uh, the aircraft uh, industry. So there is a total different uh, maintenance mindset and um, you can really see and feel that uh, it's, it's brand new, basically. And also now, on the roof, you see the uh, FLIR night vision camera, you see the radar dome, the huge searchlight, you see the massive LEDs inside. This is the uh, GPS unit for the DPS uh, system from Volvo Penta to keep the position. And also to demonstrate you how large the sun pad is, I'm one meter 88. So this is like two meters long. I can comfortably lie down and uh, enjoy my drink. Here's uh, also this nice uh, detailing with this uh, railing in black, which also, um, you can attach some fenders to, so because uh, you also have these uh, hooks there, but if, if the position is not right for you, then that's where you can attach some fenders. Yeah, and something else I want to mention is actually um, are those pop-up cleats with the uh, chaffing bars here, so you can really easy uh, attach the fenders or the ropes. And also these railings are pretty solid and sturdy with rounded edges, so you really uh, have a nice grip and you can attach some fenders. And then also um, uh, basically down here are the side windows, which I also really like how they are integrated with this little uh, uh, windows for some fresh air. But everything is flush, it's also easy to clean, easy to uh, 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 keep it salt free. And then in Inside here, there's an ice maker, which is uh, very smartly uh, located and um, another storage box. And also underneath uh, the um, seating bench is basically another storage, um, two other storage basically, where you can keep your um, uh, um, yeah, cleaning gear or something else. And um, yeah, here's the air condition control. So basically that controls these uh, aircon outlets so you can see you can really cool or heat uh, this space. And you have some uh, um, uh, lights, LED lights, and also in the night you have underwater lights, you have the courtesy lights on the, on the decks. So it's, uh, it really looks uh, super sleek. And then also another thing, the sound system is pretty cool. So you can just connect it with Bluetooth and then it's pretty punchy. Even while you're cruising with the wind, you can hear some, uh, your favorite soundtrack. So now let's go down and see the cabin and take the camera and show you this uh, beautiful spacious cabin downstairs. So you go down the stairs, then you have in the front um, the TV, you have this uh, little windows, also the skylight, then you have a lot of storage uh, back here um, all around and then of course also under the benches, then uh, this is uh, actually uh, a table that you can raise and lower and then you have the bilges uh, down here that also acts as some storage and then you could actually put a mattress so you have an additional bed here then you have a nice little kitchen with the optional um, uh, uh, cooking plate you have the um, Samsung uh, uh, microwave you have some sliding doors here to store some uh, uh, kitchen uh, things, a nice little uh, cabinet for the trash, then another fridge and then behind this uh, locker you actually have um, your switchboard with your service batteries and the engine and generator batteries, then you have the main switches um, for the thrusters and everything, you have your 230 volt, you have an inverter actually on this boat. So the inverter allows you to run the gyro stabilization system and also the sockets so basically you can have even a coffee without having the generator on and this was a 15,000 years retrofit installation by the owners so then obviously you have all your um, switches here um, your black water and uh, all your uh, things for the navigation which we can switch off now so then of course if you switch on the gyro it will also run about in on the inverter as i just said so now we basically just uh, leave on the um, fridges and also the fresh and gray water main bilge and uh, the flaps we can all switch that up um, the bilge obviously we need to leave on um, and then down here everything is fine so then we can close 
this one. Behind here, this door, we have this uh, beautiful large uh, shower that actually I'm um, one meter 88. So you can see it's actually like one meter 95 or something like that. And it has this uh, toilet also with some daylight. It's quite spacious and there's also some storage uh, below here uh, for some wet stuff like shampoos, etc. Glass door and a nice little toilet. It's, it's quite spacious for a 42 footer and it's very luxurious, very nice uh, uh, detailing. So it's pretty, uh, pretty amazing, I have to say, for this size. And then coming from the toilet under the stairs, you have this surprisingly large full beam master cabin. Of course, you cannot stand up here, but uh, it has a full uh, double bed that allows you to, uh, to sleep nicely uh, on the side. And then here you have also some daylight coming in and uh, some little locker. And of course you have some storage underneath. So everything is, uh, is pretty nicely set up. And to demonstrate how large it is, let me put the camera here um, and switch that like this. So I'm lying down again, one meter 88, no problem at all. And um, also here, the width. So it's really comfortable. You can stretch your arms out here and um, you actually feel not even uh, tight or enclosed. It's, it's actually quite uh, generous. So as a couple, and even I think with some two small kits, it's uh, something that you could also live aboard a couple of days. And then underneath here, you have some more uh, storage that you can open like this. Let me demonstrate that to you. So that just goes like that. And uh, yeah, so all in all, it's very pragmatic, very well set up. Okay, now let's start the engines, which is uh, pretty convenient. You just uh, push the button, engine is running. And also, it's super quiet, and that's all an advantage of the IPS system. I know there's a lot of uh, um, pros and cons out there about IPS or not, and uh, for me, um, uh, of course, there's a little bit more maintenance because you also have to maintain the pot drives, etc. But it also gives you so much ease of use and so much convenience because with the joystick, it really is so easy to drive, so easy to maneuver. Of course, you can say if you're the super experienced captain, you just do it uh, with the engine controls. But I'm a big fan of the IPS, especially for boats like this, because also it gives you uh, a lot of room because the engines can be mounted much lower. And um, also the fuel consumption is, is, is really uh, much less. Yeah, but anyway, now um, we have the engine controls over here. So it's uh, if you come a bit closer with the camera, basically, you just activate docking mode and now um, you control everything with the joystick. So now we're ready to go and I'm going to demonstrate you, the camera goes to the land and I'm going to demonstrate you how you can go sideways and activate the docking mode, which is uh, activate the DPS basically, which is this little circle over here, which keeps the boat stable um, at its location. So let's do it. So um, now we're ready to basically use uh, the docking mode and I'm just going with the joystick like this. I'm just moving the, the joystick to the side. I show you with my finger what the joystick is doing. So it's just going to the side. Now I can move it to the front and now to the back or I can even turn the joystick so you can really, like this is turning and this is turning back. So I just take the joystick like this or like that or to the front, to the back and sideways. But I can actually also go sideways and turn. So if you don't feel aligned and now you see actually nicely the vectoring because a lot of people think the IPS system like turns completely into the side. But what it does is actually it goes like this and one um, engine goes forward and the other one backwards and then this creates the, the vectors. So basically it's like a, two lines, like a V that you attach to the boat and then it's uh, pushing you in this direction, which you can nicely see now. Um, so I do it again. So now you see 
one vector, one stream comes out there and the other one comes out here. So it's pushing here and here and this moves the boat this way. And the opposite, I go back and it's pushing to this side. So this is how it works and you can easily turn on the plate. But now let me demonstrate you the um, uh, docking system. So I just press this button and now the boat stays where it is. And this of course only works when you have the GPS, but uh, for this um, it gives you a signal when it uh, wouldn't have it. And now you can see it's very important. The boat is actually legally it's underway. So it's like driving, but it's just keeping its position. So that's nothing that you can jump in and swim. That's really just for preparing uh, to dock on the fuel station or you're in the harbor waiting uh, for your mooring place to be allocated. So you're on the VHF and say, hey, I want to go inside a port. Um, and you can just have a super nice and easy waiting position. And now basically you see you can adjust the fenders, put the lines, uh, make everything ready for you to dock. You can inspect the dock. Okay, where's the best place? Where the waves coming from? How's the wind? So you can really be uh, calm. And as you can see, the boat just keeps its position uh, by itself. But uh, it also wobbles a bit. So you really need to be aware it's under engine. It's in driving mode. So the propellers are constantly spinning and adjusting. So it's just really something important to understand. And that's uh, how easy it is. And then, um, you just switch uh, back to docking mode when you prepared your uh, uh, fenders and everything and then you can go uh, nice and easy, adjust everything and go sideways. And of course, one thing you might not like is that uh, it's so powerful and it moves so quickly, but um, you, once you get used to that, you can actually navigate super precisely. So now basically you see I'm just going sideways. I've adjusted the fenders, put the lines ready everything's good to go now you see i'm one meter 50 away coming in slowly countering a bit adjusting nicely and now i let uh, the momentum do it do the rest i'm a big fan of going very slowly and also letting the wind uh, help so now i'm stopping nicely the fenders are touching the wall and here we are you can basically give the lines and uh, yeah your boat is docked. So now that you've seen the boat, let's see some beautiful islands, some new location. Let's go. We put the engines on and we drive out of split. So now we're at the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we showed you some beautiful location, you saw the whole boat and I think now you realize that it has so much more to offer than you see on the first glimpse and it's fully specced, it's uh, for sale in uh, Split in Croatia. So if you're interested, let me know and I'd be happy to give you a tour and be assured the boat is well maintained, it's like new and ready for a new owner. So thanks for watching the video. We speak yachting, let's talk.